I stepped off the metro into a new city filled with hope and opportunity. Ah, Washington, D.C. I was overwhelmed with the sweet scent of cherry blossoms and underwhelmed by the sight of tourists wearing MAGA hats. But I made it. I had recently ended a six-year relationship and decided to follow a job promotion to our nation's capital in hopes of starting a new chapter in life. But I didn't know how much things were going to change. DC was exciting. My apartment was next to the Capitol building, my downtown office a mile away from the office of the President of the United States, President Donald J. I remember thinking, if this motherfucker gets nuked, I'm going down with him. <laughs> Everyone was either a politician or a head of the IMO, the World Bank. It was a soulless sea of powder blue dress shirts, business cards, and daddy's money. I was used to being surrounded by friends back home in San Diego and was feeling a little lonely in this new city. In search of new friends, I ventured to a beer garden after work. Making new friends has never been that difficult for me. So I follow my boozy footsteps over to a table of chatty friends. Hey, can I sit with you guys? Of course, what's your name? I'm Kylie. I'm Morgan. And he looked at me with a unique intensity. It was on. <laughs> Morgan was incredibly enthusiastic about me. He showed me DC and took me on trips up and down the East Coast. He took me to the US Tennis Open and to the endless concerts. He paid for everything, and we had so much goddamn fun together. He would clean my apartment, cook me, <laughs> cook me homemade meals, and always kept my wine glass full. He was basically a personal tour guide that I got to fuck. And oh my god, the sex. I'm talking seven times in one night. Dude needs to be in some kind of hall of sexy ass fame or some shit. But he was annoying. I didn't know how he had so many hours in the day to text and call me incessantly, even against my constant wishes of, oh my God, stop calling me at work. Despite his innate ability to annoy the absolute shit out of me, we became close. It's not like I knew anyone else in DC, plus those abs. He would constantly ask me to be his girlfriend and I would constantly say no. But finally, I fell for him. Like a Stockholm Syndrome victim to their sexy capture. <laughs> Things had started to change. He introduced me to his best friends and family. His parents welcomed me with open arms and made me feel like I was part of their family. We spent holiday dinners cooking, just the four of us together. I would FaceTime his father, I would call his mother and confide to her. His father would ask me often for advice on his paintings. He had once painted a blooming cactus into a desert landscape that he said was inspired by the beauty and brightness I bring into a room. It meant the entire world to me because honestly, family is something that I do not have. In fact, I'm the poster child for abandonment issues. <laughs> My grandmother raised me, but she was cruel and physically abusive. My mom was a functioning alcoholic who would drag me to bars at age 16 and put me into multiple physically dangerous situations with her multiple drug addict abusive boyfriends. And my dad, he was the classic absent father story. Met him a couple times, but gone since I can remember. Three out of three neglectful parents was a pretty hard ratio to ignore throughout life. But Morgan heard the stories of abuse and abandonment through my walls of tears. He made it his goal to hold my hand and to cry with me. He told me that his parents loved me for who I am and accepted me into their home as one of their own. Morgan eventually opened up to me about his family as well. 
even though they were in a good place now, Morgan told me that while he was growing up, his dad had a second family on the other side of town. I thought that was strange, but who was I to judge with my family's chaotic past? <laughs> but alas, my time in DC was finite and my position ended. It was time to move back west, back to San Diego, baby. I said goodbye to Morgan and watched him tr crumble to the ground in a teary mess as I suggested we break things off, yeah? <laughs> At the end of that conversation, he had convinced me to stay with him even though we would be apart. We spent our bicoastal long distance relationship flying back and forth to visit one another. Then finally came Valentine's Day. You know, that holiday where you spoil your lover with attention, affection, and lovemaking. Morgan's forte. He had recently bought a new gorgeous house in Richmond, Virginia. I was thrilled because this was the first time I was going to see the house after I spent an entire month on Wayfair.com designing every square foot of that house from afar. I mean everything, from rugs to furniture to hand towels. I had turned this Victorian house to a hip-ass southwestern oasis of succulents and casually draped Mexican blankets. I arrived to Richmond and quickly started rearranging the upstairs furniture while Morgan took a job interview on Zoom downstairs. I moved the laundry basket, but it felt strangely heavy. I opened it out of instinct. Directly on top of a densely packed heap of laundry was a Valentine's Day card. I felt like a little kid who had stumbled upon their Christmas present a little early when mom wasn't looking. I know I shouldn't have, but I read it, all right? Baby, you came into my life at the perfect moment. I've enjoyed every second that we've spent together. I can't wait to grow together. Yours, Belinda. <laughs> Belinda? Who the fuck is Belinda? My heart sank to the pits of my guts while my ears felt like they were gonna explode. My hand started shaking, my face flushed with hot blood. I swiftly picked up my phone. My fingers flew to Morgan's Instagram friend list and I found the only Belinda there. <laughs> She's online. I began to message her at lightning speed to the soundtrack of Mor Morgan's voice downstairs. Hi Belinda, I wrote. Sorry to bother you, are you dating Morgan by chance? Three dancing dots, she's typing back. Hi, yeah, we've been dating for a few months now. Why? Air left my lungs. I sat breathless for a few seconds before frantically packing up my recently unpacked luggage. But where was I gonna go in Richmond? What was I going to do? I called his mom. I'm coming to your house because Morgan did something. Please do not contact him until I'm safe at your home. I call my Uber, seven minutes away. Breath is shaking, ears are buzzing. I sat back down on the bed, listening to Morgan as he ended his interview. He comes bounding up the old wooden staircase saying, all right, Kylie, let's go visit Richmond. He enters the room with a grin, that fucking enthusiasm. What do you want to do first? Want to go check out the James River? <laughs> Morgan, sit down, I say. And my hand gently taps the empty space on the bed next to me. He does. I look at him with a demeanor so calm, so cool, it surprises me. Who's Belinda? He's caught off guard. His face looks so stupid. Oh, it's just a friend. Mm. Just a friend? Nothing romantic? He grows more comfortable. Oh, no, 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 we play tennis together. Oh, really? Because the entire time you're on your interview call, I was up here talking with Belinda. His dumb, 
face became stupider and his eyes grew to the size of saucers. His mouth dropped open. He leapt up to his feet with a look of such disbelief. All he could say was, Kylie, no, Kylie, no. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I picked up my bag to leave, but he stood between me and the doorway, not allowing me to leave. I tried to push by, and I threatened to call the police if he wouldn't let me, but he refused to let me pass. I slowly, gently put my suitcase down. I stood in front of him and looked up to meet his eyes. I planted my feet in front of him, and then I slapped him with all the force that I had in my five foot four body like that. Buzz, my Uber's here. I run. I arrived at his parents' house, a blubbering mess. They greeted me with looks of sadness and pity. Morgan had already called them, they knew. He was cheating on me, I cried. They ushered me to the guest bedroom and gave me the space to sob my guts out. My phone starts ringing. That motherfucker better not be calling me. I look at my phone, it's Belinda. <laughs> I picked up that phone faster than I could blink. <laughs> Belinda, hi. <laughs> hi, Kylie. I think there's a third woman. <laughs> yep, we have now officially graduated from a love triangle to a love trapezoid. <laughs> yeah, I may not have family, but I know my fucking shapes, okay? I walk out to give his parents the <laughs> sickening news. His mom slowly sank from a standing position down to her knees, frail and devastated disbelief. Timidly, his dad says, well, Kylie, you can't be too mad. I mean, you were dating while he was engaged. <gasps> Fucking what? Morgan had told me he was previously broken off in an engagement from the past, but you said that was all over before we met. Yeah, this motherfucker was engaged while we were dating. Oh no mames. But then it hit me. It hit me hard. His parents knew the whole time. They knew about Belinda, the fiance, this other woman. They knew about me. I wasn't in a trapezoid, I was in a goddamn pentagon. <laughs> yeah, I know my fucking shapes, all right? <sighs> the way his mom sank to the floor in the living room, that frail image I have of her in my mind, she wasn't in disbelief. She had just realized that by normalizing her husband's infidelity, her son had become the same monster. I thought they cared about me as much as I cared about them. But the fact was, they knew, and they didn't care the way Morgan treated me. They made me feel like I was a little girl left behind by her family once again. The next day, my plane landed in San Diego. I got off the plane and I grabbed my luggage. And when I did, I heard two voices yell my name in unison. I looked towards the baggage claim. <laughs> <laughs> and standing there were my two best friends with a welcome home sign, flowers, and hugs. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> to this day, that is one of the most beautiful sights I have ever seen. I absolutely wept. They embraced me in a group hug, and immediately I realized, this is my home, this is my family. Nothing could have made that moment any sweeter. Until they pushed a thermos into my hand that contained a 40 of Modelo. <laughs> That's my girls. I was definitely home. You see, Growing up, I was always looking for a family that I didn't have, and I tried to find it with this guy. 
When Morgan introduced me to his family, I felt like I finally found that sense of belonging, protection, and love. When the betrayal came from Morgan, I was hurt. But when I found out his family was in on it, I was devastated. While on the plane back home to San Diego, I remember thinking that that familial void will be forever unfilled. But when I saw my two best friends waiting for me with gifts and so happy to see me, I realized that they were my family all along. They were always there and always would be. Cheers, Jordan, I love you. Kylie Chance, everyone, Kylie.